So for us here in Holy Family, this is a kind of a special day for us, as well as I said at the beginning, uh, considering it's the 1st of May, the first uh, day of the month dedicated to Our Lady, and at the same time, the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, we have a feast of Our Lady and St. Joseph together, uh, which, is, which is great. I was thinking this morning about how how family works from the perspective of God, or how family should work from the perspective of God. And when we kind of understand that, we can also understand then, in general, how even how God wants religious life to work from His from His perspective. Like, what what are His hopes or desires for family and for religious life? And a quotation from. Uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, uh, a bishop from, from the States of New York, came to mind because uh, I remember reading uh, in his book, it was a book that I read for in preparation for my ordination to the diaconate, a very, very good book called The Priest is Not His Own. Uh, and he, he uses a quotation there, or he says something there which I think is, is absolutely fantastic. He says, The enemy, Satan, the devil, can appear in all sorts of forms. He says, He can even uh, appear in the form of a priest but he will never appear in the form of a priest victim or a priest who sacrifices himself. So the the preacher, organizer, popular guy, whatever, uh, he can do that. Uh, But he will never appear in the form of a priest who is a victim, so a priest who sacrifices himself. And then we think of the second letter of St. John who describes how the Antichrist will be. And we imagine the Antichrist will be this horrific, um, cruel, dictator or leader or something like that and you know have a tail that pokes out from behind his jacket his hoodie Uh, he'll be wearing a hoodie no he won't he'll be wearing a suit more than likely and uh yeah and we imagine that this is this awful character but saint john says the antichrist is he who will deny the coming of jesus in the flesh so deny the incarnation and you think of this i thought I thought you could do worse things. I thought you could do, you know, genocide or surely there are worse things. And obviously those things are awful too. But the, the reason that this is the, the mark of the, the Antichrist is what? Why is it so important that we recognize the incarnation, the, the, coming, the, the coming of God as man? Because as man, in a human nature, Jesus was able to sacrifice himself. And that's, that's just that's what Satan will not do. I mean, he can, be, he can actually be a good preacher and he can actually be quite the, uh, uh, a good theologian in the sense of he, can, he, he'll, he'll, he knows scripture fairly well. He's had plenty of time to uh, study it and try and get around it and try and confuse it. Uh, so he knows scripture well. So he can do all sorts of things that look good on the outside, but sacrifice, this idea, this key concept of sacrifice is something he will not accept. That Jesus would sacrifice himself, that a priest would sacrifice himself. And then now onto our, our, our saints of the day, Saint Joseph the Worker and, and our Blessed Lady in, in, this, in the beginning of this month of May. The key component of good motherhood, good fatherhood and good religious life is love, which is expressed in self-sacrifice. It's, it's, so it's, it's, all, it's all the same thing, right? It's the same, the same idea running through everything, right? From Jesus' incarnation, priesthood, fatherhood, motherhood, uh, all of our vocations, whatever they may be. If we're not willing to sacrifice ourselves, we are, therefore are not willing to authentically love. No love, you're not ready for heaven. That's just the distillation of our faith. Right? In, in, if we're not willing to sacrifice ourselves, then we're not willing to actually love. If you're not willing for, to love, you're not really ready for heaven. So that's why this, this idea is, is so, so key to our faith. It's so key to, to who we are as Christians. And it's so, uh, that's why the, the, the enemy's crosshairs are 100% set on any sense of self-sacrifice, be it in the church. I mean, remember when I was, when I was, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, we used to, Lent kind of properly. Um, even lads who wouldn't practice that much, they'd go off, you know, chocolate or sweets or whatever it was for Lent. This is in primary school, like. Now, what that actually meant was when you'd get them, you'd put them into a box. So an ever-growing box of, of chocolate and sweets and general stuff that'll make your head rot. 
um, you know, just, and that box grew and grew and grew, and then Easter Sunday you could just eat it all in one fell swoop and have a sugar high for three days and not sleep and drive your parents mad. But that was considered a sacrifice back in the day. And you might have gotten maybe two Easter eggs. Anybody from my vintage might remember that. You might have got one from your parents and maybe one from the granny you liked or who liked you. Right? And that was about it, right? about, about two Easter eggs, I'd say. Whereas now, for Lent, we do nothing, and we get six, seven, ten Easter eggs, <laughs> having given up nothing. <laughs> right? So this, the, the idea like, of self-sacrifice, little by little, we're just completely rooting it out of the faith, out of the church, out of society in general, right? out of relationships. Why be faithful if there's someone more attractive than the, the, your husband, wife, present girlfriend or boyfriend, uh, why not be yourself and be true to what you feel you're called to and <laughs> why not? You know what I mean? Like, uh, or like before as well, even when, when we were younger, um, uh, we had generally speaking two channels, right? RTE1 and RTE2, which then became Network2, which then went back to being RTE2 for some strange reason. Um, and then some of the richer folk had the channels, right, satellite, and they had Sky and all of the, the English channels and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, whereas now you don't need any of those because you have an infinite supply of cats jumping out of Christmas trees uh, on YouTube. You can watch anything you want for hours, right? I mean, one weakness I have is uh, watching trucks drive through mud. Right, just those Americans. I could watch those for hours. Like, absolutely pointless, like brain numbing stuff. And then a load of guys standing, <laughs> beer belly guys standing on the side down in Texas going, yeah, look at her, look at her go. <laughs> I could watch those for hours. I love it. Um, anyway, so you can watch those kind of things for hours. You don't need the channels now at all. You've got your phone, it's in your pocket, hours of endless entertainment. And it just it allows us to dodge. Sacrifice. Dodge our jobs, dodge our responsibilities. Oh, I'm busy. I'm up in my room studying. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> For hours and hours. Absolutely pointless. So this, 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 this key idea, to get back to it, when we look at St. Joseph, we look at our Blessed Lady, right? they knew how to live the sacrifice that their vocation called them to. So when you look at modern feminism, when you look at the emasculation that's going on in our society as well, both of the, 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 the problems in, in, in these camps, in these fields, is the avoidance of sacrifice. So women who want to do everything that men do, avoiding sacrifice, and men who want to do nothing, avoiding sacrifice. Men who are kind of maybe eventually happy enough just to hand everything over, fine, you want to do it, work away. I watch trucks driving through mud. Um, so we're tempted to passivity and ladies are often tempted to control. So we'll hand it all over and do nothing. And women are get landed with everything thinking this is freedom when they end up carrying out. If you look at like uh, during communism in Russia, we still see the effects of this in many of our mission stations where when it, this, this idea of liberating women and our women are strong and our women can do everything, then the women ended up doing everything So then they planted the fields and took care of the kids and dug ditches and repaired machines and all the guys were like, yeah, that's fantastic, while they stayed at home drinking vodka. Ruined society. Men stopped being men and women did everything. That's not women's liberation. Whereas when, when we each accept the sacrifices of our vocation, and if you will, almost embrace them. Because when we do things out of love, when we sacrifice ourselves out of love, the sacrifice almost ceases to be a sacrifice. When we do that, we see the flourishing of society. We see the flourishing of family. A dad is willing to sacrifice himself for love of his kids. A mom is willing to sacrifice herself for love of her family. Kids who are willing to sacrifice their free time to clean up the kitchen. And who will the place after themselves? It's fantastic. I mean, it sounds like a dream. But this should be reality. Everywhere, priests who sacrifice themselves for love of their people. People who sacrifice themselves for love of the church. And so everyone is giving. And everyone is giving of themselves rather than saying, I demand recognition for what I... I'm not getting, I'm not getting enough attention here. I'm not getting enough thanks here. Sorry, I, I, I've been making the flowers now in the church for 14 years and 
and I only got thanked 16 times this year. I mean, normally it was after every Mass. The priest would say, thank you, Teasy, now for the, for the new flowers. You're very good. I mean, he hasn't thanked me now in two weeks. He's obviously out with me. Like, why did we make everything about us? Do what you do, serve, and get out of the way. Like, serve out of love, and do it for love of the Lord, and get out of the way. And, and then, like, we're doing all these things for love of the Lord. It's, just, it's such a purification. And if we get thanked, great, and if we don't, no problem. This is like, you know, see, we think of the, the greatness of St. Joseph and Our Lady what was in their hiddenness, in their quietness, in their silence, in their service, in their love, in their fidelity, in their prayer, in their smallness in the eyes of the world, in their, the great love with which they did the small things. Neither of them wrote books. Neither of them held lectures. Neither of them were even very famous in their own day. But look at what saints they became. They embraced the sacrifice of their vocation. And it freed them. It turned them into great saints. And it filled them with great joy. Our, our gospel is often underestimated for how joyful it should make us. Especially we Irish tend to focus more on the, the sacrificial side of things and the, the Loch Dergs and the, the Croak Patricks and the flagellate yourself whenever you can kind of uh, aspect of the faith whereas our faith is about freedom it's about being set free it's about healing it's about heaven it's about jesus it's the, the such such joy in it all so we ask the good lord today to help us to recognize where we might be uh, avoiding the sacrifice of our vocation and in so doing uh, limit the joy of others that the Lord might heal us from that. Give us the necessary spiritual kick in the pants and wake us up to what he is calling us to do for the building up of his kingdom. That we might not fall short of the mark. And that these small sacrifices, in the grand scheme of things, these small sacrifices that he asks us to make, may we do so, may we make them with great love and with great joy. Amen.